So when it comes to skill building, it is repetition and consistency. So you have got to be on the phone dialing every single day. And I think this is the biggest mistake that agents make is they think they can get on the phone once a month and make it happen. And then they say, well, I got on the phone that, you know, for an hour and it didn't work. Well, an hour is just not enough. So, um, I, you know, I try to teach them exactly what I did, which, hey, you've got to be in the dialer for two to four hours every single day. You have to, you have to time block your prospecting time and you can't be interrupted and you can't go show houses at 8.30 a.m. and roll into the office at 11 and then maybe you make your calls, maybe you don't. It is about consistency and doing it every single day. And, you know, the funniest thing is I've sold homes to people that was the wrong, I called the wrong number and I sold people houses. So you could be, you could be really bad at scripting and not know what the heck you're doing. But if you just call people enough, eventually you're going to connect with somebody that needs your services. It's that time. Welcome to Roadmap, how to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week, we interview a great agent who's consistently taking several listings each month. We have an exciting guest today, and we encourage you to take notes and apply as much of their knowledge as quickly as you can, and then use the copycat principle. Let me, let me introduce my co-host from the Southern Ohio, Cincinnati area, Northern Kentucky, Eastern Indiana, uh, Sarah Close. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Ron. Thanks for having me. Sarah is uh, the best co-host you could ever have. You know, not <laughs> only has she run a, a team selling a couple hundred homes a year for many years, uh, and and you did it solo for a long time and doing long it again. Yep. Started, yeah, and now owns and co-owns several real estate offices in Southern Ohio, North, and serves Northern Kentucky and Eastern Indiana, a big wide area, a swath of the yeah. country, and uh, has what five hundred mid five hundreds in agents, oh, five fifty, yep, five hundred fifty real yeah. estate agents uh, that she has to herd and put in a box every day. <laughs> No, they're all, it's all good. No, you have some great people. You really have some very amazing, fortunate. you have some amazing rock stars that are yeah. really very Super professional. Fortunate. And it's a very professional operation. Thank you. So, and your team, team is uh, you tracking for, you still tracking in the mid 200s? That's the goal. We'll see where we land, but right now good. that's the goal. So. Good, 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 good. So, all righty, let's dive in. So let's, uh, you know, a wonderful guest. Let me introduce our guest from the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area of Florida. Oh, fabulous. Yes. Uh, Candace Decker. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. How are you, Candace? Thanks for coming today. I'm doing awesome. I'm really excited to be here. Great. Good deal. Welcome. So let's dive in and see what we can learn about your business. Now, did you say you moved from one market to another at one time? I did. So I moved from a very rural area in Northern Illinois back in the fall of 2019 um, to Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Florida. Um, so I've been here since. Wow. That's a culture shock. <laughs> That's a big move. That is a big move. Mm -hmm. a yeah, they celebrate New Year's Eve at uh, 8 p.m., don't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Tell us what that transition was like for you. That's a big move. That's not just to the one market over. Um, are, do you still have a team in Illinois or did you move everything to Florida or what does that look like for you? So I'm, I was very lucky because my sister-in-law and I worked together in Illinois. So she took over my book of business there as I transitioned down to Florida. I really only knew about 25 people here when I moved. Um, so taking my prospecting skills and being able to transfer them here was huge. It was a huge asset to me um, because it is it is scary moving 1,200 miles and you go from a market where you're very confident and you know a lot of people and everyone knows your name to a brand new market landing in an area where there's 30,000 real estate agents in our entire market. And then in our city alone, there's 7,000. Yeah, that's, that's a bunch. 
bunch of agents. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they're all fighting over that great dollar. What's a, what's a typical commission check there? Well, the average sales price now is about four hundred thousand. So really like about you know twelve twelve thousand dollars. That's a good size check. Yeah. That's that's totally. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Good. So good. how did you do that? What did that transition look like? You know, so you jump in from you know uh, the Great White North and into the mm-hmm. Southern Florida. And how did you how did you get started there? What did your prospecting look? How did talk take us on that journey with you a little bit? So I had a lot of pressure because I had talked my husband into moving and leaving his job and uprooting. We had our kids were two and four years old at the time. Um, so it was a big move and I had a lot of weight on my shoulders that I had to make this work because I was not going to drag us all the way back up there to the winters. So I knew that I had to make this work. So day one, we were in our new house. We did not have any furniture because we moved during a hurricane. Okay. And so we had no furniture. So I took, I, I think I had a couple of books or I took some sort of box and I set my laptop on my kitchen counter and I just started dialing day one in my new market. Um, and it was cool because I was able to take, um, I think you guys set me up on my new data right away. So I was just able to get the the new expired list for the day. And I just started calling on day one using the same script that I had been using in Illinois. And that's what's so crazy. I think sometimes we think, well, a different market, there's going to be different conversations. It really is the same conversation, um, you know, 1,200 miles away. And this is the craziest part. I took a listing on my first day in my new market. Nice. It's a very portable business, isn't it? Isn't it just paint and paint and carpet and ceramic tile? Isn't that really all it is? It is. It is the same. And it's still a human being on the other end of the line. I think that's what's really important to know is we're just people, right? I'm calling to help you um, because you didn't have a successful sale last time around. And I I just want to see how I can help. So I think just coming from a place of value and having a good heart and not chasing a check, but just chasing the opportunity to help somebody uh, mm-hmm. is very important. And, um, you know, that was something in the Midwest that, you know, I had those values and I just brought them here and and it worked. Just coming in contribution, like how, you know, let's mm-hmm. see if we can help you get where you want to get moved to. Exactly. Which is a wonderful thing. Absolutely. So it sounds like um, you were saying it was, a, was that an expired or cancel? Is that a large part mm-hmm. of your prospecting anatomy is, is spent in that space? Yes. So um, I, I mean, I, I looked at expireds and in our market, they're called terminated. I look mm-hmm. at them really as the same thing, even though they are a little bit different. But a lot of times the terminated or the canceled, um, they just didn't have a successful sale or there was some big life change that happened to them that maybe right now is not a good good time, but maybe two months from now or six months from now, it will be another opportunity um, for them to sell their home. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I think those canceled and terminated are the best because most agents will only call once or twice and then they give up. And those terminated are the long-term follow-ups. And so it's almost like the last man standing is the one who ends up getting it. Talk to us about your follow-up. That can be, you know, daunting when you've got a lot mm-hmm. in the hopper. What What is your follow-up plan when you've been in dialogue with the Terminator? Well, I think the first thing that's really important, um, there's, and, and you can Google this to get the actual stats, like the sales statistics of follow-up, that only 1% of sales or transactions happen in the first follow-up. So if you are only calling one time, you're only capturing 1% of the market, which most of the time, you know, that person is just not ready at that moment. Um, So that's really important. Um, The follow-up is, I don't know if I call it aggressive, but it's staying in front of them as much as possible and being able to recognize when they really are ready um, and and asking more questions. So we've mm-hmm. got to ask as many questions as possible to get to their actual motivation because a lot of times, and I think about when I go to buy a car or I'm shopping at the store and the salesperson comes up to me and says, 
furniture is the best, right? Because they're standing at the front and everyone's harassing you. Do you need help? Do you have any questions? You know, what are you looking for? I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm not ready. But guess what? At some point, I'm going to find that couch that I love and I'm going to need a salesperson, right? And now I'm like looking at in the store, like, why isn't anyone here to help me? I need help. Right. And I, right. That's the same thing with, with terminating. Mm. They're going to need someone at some point. And the person who's hovering around, right, who's been calling and consistently following up is the one that's going to get them on the right day when they said, oh, actually, I was thinking about calling an agent again because I do need to sell. Mm -hmm. So you've got to follow up forever, yeah. forever. A newer agent thinks that they get one no. Well, no, we're not. We're, we're just going to leave it off for a while. Okay, bye-bye. And they never call back. Yeah. Or they might call back four months later, but, oh, yeah, we sold that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. What, what would be the cadence of your follow-up? If, if I, my house terminates, how, when am I going to hear from you? How frequently am I going to hear from you? What are you saying to me? Well, you've got to be really organized on your leads because um, you've got to make sure you're calling them at the right time. If they say that they're going to sell in a month, you always want to cut the time in half. Um, because things end up happening and people change their mind, especially in our market. Um, uh, typically, these are second homes, investment properties for people. So, you know, they could get a call from their accountant or their financial advisor and they're making a different move than what they said. So our follow up always has to be more aggressive than maybe what um, that expired was originally thinking. But um, what I found is that they like when we're aggressive. I've been hired so many times by sellers that said, you know what? I just love how aggressive you are. And my last agent was so passive. I need a bulldog to get my home sold. So I teach the same thing to my agents is, you know, we have to be aggressive. We've got to get out of our comfort zone because people want that. You know, I always uh, tell this to my team, which is, do you want to hire a passive attorney or an aggressive attorney to work on your behalf? Right. We're all going to say we want somebody who's aggressive and a seller wants the same exact thing. Right. So when they when they start giving you pushback, you make that observation. Right. 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 Do right. you, you want someone like me to represent right. you? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can say, hey, the reason I'm so aggressive is because I'm really passionate about selling homes and I want to get your sold, too. Because look at the last agent you hired, right? You were on the market for 200 days and it wasn't successful. Don't you want it different this time around? And something else I would say is, hey, I don't want to have this same conversation with you six months down the line. Right. We've already been through this once. I've called you once. I don't want to, I don't want to have to have this conversation again. Yeah. So let's do the right thing and let's get together for a couple of minutes. Do the right thing. I love it. <laughs> Let's do the right thing. You know, and that's an interesting, you are well scripted. The, that little piece about doing the right thing is a part of mm -hmm. human nature. Yeah. You know, and, and I've heard another variation of let's list it right and sell it right. You know, when they start talking about flaky things like, oh, I'm going to try it on my own or this, that, and that. Mm -hmm. So that, that you are well scripted. <laughs> It just comes from the experience, right? Let's just do the right thing. Let's just do the right thing because most people want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So when you're coaching the agents on your team, because I understand you're you're less in production now and you're more kind of working through others, what types of things are you sharing with them so that they get their skills tooled up? So when it comes to skill building, it is repetition and consistency. So you have got to be on the phone dialing every single day. And I think this is the biggest mistake that agents make is they think they can get on the phone once a month and make it happen. And then they say, well, I got on the phone that, you know, for an hour and it didn't work. Well, an hour is just not enough. So, um, I, you know, I try to teach them exactly what I did, which, hey, you've got to be in the dialer for two to four hours every single day. You have to you have to time block your prospecting time and you can't be interrupted and you can't go show houses at 8 30 AM and roll into the office at 11. And then maybe you make your calls. Maybe you don't, 
It is about consistency and doing it every single day. And you know, the funniest thing is I've sold homes to people. I was the wrong, I called the wrong number and I sold people houses. So you could be, you could be really bad at scripting and not know what the heck you're doing. But if you just call people enough, eventually you're going to connect with somebody that needs your services. So like yeah, like your team's on the phone two to four hours a day. Do they do script practice? Do they have like a contact target or what does the anatomy of their morning look like? Mm -hmm. um, so we do um, do script practice together. So always sharpening those skills. I say, you, you can't practice on the client, right? Or our potential client. You've got to get, um, you know, that a little bit of anxiety. We all have it, that fear mm -hmm. of the phone. Um, we've got to, we've got to get over that. And so practice is key. And I know for me every single day, um, I have a different role play partner. We are jumping on the phone. We weren't having conversations about how our family was. We were just getting on the phone practicing and practicing harder than the actual calls mm -hmm. and making sure that we were on our game um, so that when we did call uh, that we were not, we weren't practicing. Um, so that's a big one is, is that practicing on our own time, just writing, writing the script out word for word, and then reciting it back to yourself. And then going as far as um, actually recording yourself saying it and listening it to it back while you're driving. So I know it sounds so crazy, like, wow, I'm getting this intense on memorizing this stuff. But when you can internalize the script, then you have the ability to listen. Mm -hmm. Because if you're thinking about what you're going to say next, we can't, we can't listen. We can't actively listen and take notes. And that's the most important part because we want to talk 20% of the time and listen 80% of the time to the seller. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. How much, as far as like ratios of business, like are you 50-50 listings buyers? What does that look like for you? Yeah, I would say we're a little bit more buyer heavy than listing heavy, um, mm -hmm. just because um, we have a lot of newer agents like to work with buyers. Um, so I would say a little bit heavier on buyers. Gotcha, I gotcha. So do you have any particular scripts that you are, are working with them on the buyer side as far as, um, as far as prospecting for buyers goes, or are they mostly coming from your listings? Where does that, mm -hmm. where does that fall? Yeah. So with online lead generation, um, we like to use a, a script called ALM, get the appointment, um, find, or I'm sorry, get the area location motivation and then book the appointment. So we are very appointment heavy team um, mm -hmm. because we know once we get in front of them face to face, um, show our value proposition, our professionalism, our knowledge and value um, that we are able to retain them as a client. But we've okay. got to get that face to face. And it's the same thing with sellers and expires, right? We've got to get that face to face because this is a human business. And transactions don't always happen over the phone. They may in our market, um, but that face-to-face -face is so important. Yeah, that's it. I know we're a lot more powerful when we're face-to-face. -face. Zoom will be a good second, but you know, if you can be face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff happens. And I think for me, when I first started calling expireds, I so my goal was to book an appointment every single day. So when you're first starting out you got to take, you got to get really scrappy and take every single appointment you can get because then you can go out and you can, you can perfect your presentation. And then once you get going, you get better and better and better. Then you could take the more ready to go uh, pre-qualified listing appointments. But for me, I learned so much when I just like really rolled up my sleeves and said, I'm going to get an appointment every single day. Mm -hmm. whether they're ready right now or they're not. And right. sometimes they weren't ready, but I could show them how they should be ready. So um, taking all those appointments right. just really, really built the momentum for me. Right. A little uh, full immersion there. And then you back it off so that your batting average, uh, you go on 10 appointments and you, you like to, where do you like the batting average for your folks to be? You go on 10 listing appointments. How many would they take? Six. They take six, 60%, six out of 10. Good. Yeah. yeah. 
which is a lot better than the average of two out of 10. Yeah, absolutely. Which is out there. That's, I think those mm -hmm. are NAR stats. Yeah. Well, two out of 10. what we do, which is really, really important, is the pre qualification call prior to the appointment. So if you take anything away from this today, this should be the golden nugget because a lot of us book the appointment and then we just show up and we, we're, we're blindfolded. We, yeah. we don't have the right answers to cater the presentation to get them to sign. Right. So the important questions that you have to ask is, hey, I know you said you wanted to be, you know, you wanted to hit the market, you know, November 1st, when do you want to be closed by? Do you have a price point in mind that you want to list for? Are there any other decision makers that need to be present for our meeting? What is important to you about the agent that you choose to represent you? And the most important question you have to ask is, hey, Ren, when we meet, and I show you everything um, with our marketing and the pricing um, and everything looks good to you. Are you prepared to sign the listing paperwork? And the reason why this is important is because if they're not prepared and they said, no, we've got to meet with two other agents. Awesome. Now I know that information, right? So we're, we're getting keyed in. So then when you're actually at the appointment, if they said, yes, we would sign, now we've shown them everything. We've gotten to the point where they need to sign and they say no. Well, I haven't done my job. Right. So now we're missing something. Yeah, that Again, question is uh, that question is one of the first closes. Before you even get there, you you have just closed them. Yeah. And then depending on how they answer that, you carry it forward. Right. Exactly. What other lead gen levers do you guys uh, pull to generate your sales? Yeah, so we do a lot of online lead generation. Um, so that that's a big one. Um, Facebook, agent to agent referrals, and we have a lot of lead sources that we lean on. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But still very prospecting based. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Good deal. And how many agents are on the team right now that are selling? We have 16 agents. 16? One six. Mm -hmm. And then how many units do each of them you know, target to do per year? So the, um, so the goal is 24, mm -hmm. but of course we have newer agents that, that does take a little bit of time to get going, especially the market has shifted, right? So last year where that was really easy, we had agents coming on the team, getting a deal within their first 30 days. Now that's taking between 30 and 60 days. Um, but we, are getting our new agents on the phone day one when you join our team you are getting on the phone gotcha. and we used to wait about two weeks but now it's like hey we you know we are a prospecting team um we have minimum standards of the amount of dials and appointments you take a week so we're just going to get you in right away we're going to get that fear of the phone over with mm -hmm. um and get you in the group so um we have definitely shifted how we've worked um with our new agents Gotcha. That's great. Do you guys have any programs that you run for your sphere of influence or your past clients? So we have a VIP program. So um, we do quarterly events with our um, with our clients. And of course, that's really fun because we have all of these clients that we got to work with and that we don't always see all the time. Sure. So um, that's a great way for us to get together, make it fun. And it's a great way to connect with them instead of just always calling to you know talk to them about their home value so we still want to talk to them about that but hey we also just want to hang out with you and get to know you as people some good information here and you're what well, it's well it's very organized very consistent uh and very scripted which is huge which is huge and, and well scripted any uh coaching influences as part of this whole thing yes i have had coaching for the last three years. That's really how I was inspired to start calling expired. I went to a Tom Ferry sales edge, which actually those are no longer after COVID. Um, but back in 2019, I went to a Tom Ferry sales edge event, but it was funny because um, they had a panel of agents and there was three agents up on the stage and there was this guy from Atlanta and 
he he got on stage and said, I'm doing 550,000 in GCI and I call expireds. And I was like, wait, I didn't even know agents made that much money because I came from a small town where there's only 60 transactions in the whole town. And I'm like, wait a second, I can do this? And this guy's doing it, this guy can do it. I know I can do it. And he actually sat behind me. So I, you know, I circled back and I was like, hey, I need to know what, where are you getting this information from? T tell me everything I need to know. He's like, Vulcan seven, here's my referral code, get onto Vulcan and, and just start dialing. So I went home and on day one, so my <laughs> average price point was I think 175. And I got on the phone and, and day one, I got myself in the door in a $1.5 million listing. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just, I just did it. See, that's the thing. Um, we always think we have to aim, get ready and then fire, but it's actually the opposite. We've got to fire, get ready and aim. We've got to do the opposite. And then you started at the top. Let's see. What's the most expensive listing that expired today? <laughs> One point right. five. <laughs> so, but here's the cool thing. I'm like, wow, I can get in the door on this listing that I normally would never, ever had access to. Mm -hmm. And that is what excited me. So that's going great. back to coaching and influence. Who was that guy that uh, was on stage? You remember? Yeah. Carl Phillips. He's a great friend of mine. He's in Kennesaw, great. Georgia, and he's still a good friend of mine. And I just remember him saying like my, he also said, my, I'm not going to say the swear word he said, but he said, my junky videos is better than your no videos. So he was also doing video uh -huh. and he was like, he just showed me like, it doesn't matter what you look like or what market you're in or who mm -hmm. you are, just execute and just do it. You know, yeah. most of us get paralyzed with our fear of the phone. Um, but if you can just get over that and just do it. Love it. You're, Love you're it. Better Love than 97% of the other agents out there who are doing zero actions to move their business. Good deal. <laughs> this is great. I love that story. I do too. Good. Very cool. Well, you're doing all the right stuff. What is, uh, yeah, well, what's the future hold for what you're doing? Because you were in production. Now you're leading this group doing uh, and teaching them everything that you've learned to be successful on the listing side of the business. What's next? Where does this all go? Yeah, so we have really, really exciting things coming up. Um, we are growing our team every day. So um, we have about four agents joining our team every single month. Um, and just my my passion for helping um, sellers is now helping agents help sellers. So um, we're really passionate about helping agents. And um, we're going to continue to do that in our own market. And then we're also expanding across the United States and helping other team leaders build out their teams. Um, so that's what the future holds right now. Wow. That's exciting. Very cool. Wow. So you're going to really just be hopping around a lot of other markets. Are you yourself expanding what you're doing in Florida? Are you going to, you know, Naples, Marco Island, mm -hmm. all these other areas? Or what are you doing? Yeah. There? So, so Naples is in the works right now. I mean, naturally we're already helping buyers and sellers down in Naples and Marco Island. So, you know, it's just a natural progression um, in our market. Wow. And, and the price point is not so bad there. Yeah. You know what? It's not bad. <laughs> People are pretty awesome too. Yeah, that's it. I know. And in the winter, you know, snow shoveling is not quite as difficult there. <laughs> yeah. It's called sand shoveling down here. Sand shoveling. Yeah, that's, yeah, it. That's, better. that's it. That's wow. it. That's it. Good. This has been very helpful for a lot of the people that watch this show. As you said before we came on, she goes, I just started watching roadmaps and figured this out. And and uh and and now you're on one helping people continue this process. Yeah, it's so cool. And and the one thing I do, like before, before I go, um, the one, well, there's a couple of things, the coaching, but also finding a mentor who helped me. So there is an agent out of Philadelphia named Tom Tool, and he took me under his wing. He saw how hard I was working and he showed me the ropes and really, really helped me. And then I just watched YouTube videos every single morning. So I watched Roadmap and then there's a lot of content on YouTube of just live calls 
And I would listen to that every single morning while I would work out. And so it was just really ingrained in me. And I would learn what other people were saying. And I just took those little nuggets and implemented that into my business. It's so, kind of a copycat principle, isn't it? I mean, basically, you're like, what works? Yeah. What do I need to say to make that happen? I mean, it's not rocket science. Just do what people no. are doing and you'll have what people have. Yeah, don't reinvent the wheel here because yes. real estate right. hasn't really changed. Even you look no. at Mike Berry's scripts, we've been saying the same things for 25 years. Yeah, so right. There's yeah. there's not much that has changed. So, Candace, here's the thing. There are going to be a lot of people going, how do I reach her? I want to ask her a question. I want to, I have somebody moving down to Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Naples, Mark Brown. They want to buy a 2.1 in Naples. Well, they, that would only be a condo in Naples, but we'll, yeah. we'll help them. And then, you know, how do they reach you? What's the best way? All right. So the best way to reach me, go to my Instagram. It's at Candace Decker Real Estate. Um, I'm in there quite often. So Give me a follow and then shoot me a DM. Um, and I'm always happy to help. Even if you have a question about calling expireds or you're looking for scripts, um, I, I actually, I love to help and give back. So please reach out. Well, thank you so much, Candace. This has been wonderful. This has helped a lot of people. And we're grateful that you finally made it to our show. Uh, may we check back with you in six months to a year and see how, uh, how the uh, Candace Decker empire is coming along. I would love that. Good deal. We're probably going to check with you in February in person when it's cold up here. <laughs> I would love that. Come on down. <laughs> All righty. Thanks again. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Candace. You too. And thanks, everybody. See you next week.